into week four of this training block. I think my very first vlog of this block was my squat day. So it was like the first training day back after kind of some time off. We were pretty light on that day. Now we're into week four. So this is gonna be our heaviest squats. The workout's gonna look very similar in terms of exercises and reps, um, but quite a bit heavier. So we actually get to do a little bit more fun weights today. Um, finishing up this block means that next week we'll be starting in on some new training, which is exciting. We're getting actually some pretty close to some shows. We are seven weeks out from uh, PSL, the 73 kilo um, like server super series show. And then four weeks after that will be Shaw. So we've got two very different weight class shows that we're training for right now. Um, excited to get into some more events a little bit. Uh, feeling a little hesitant right now. If you've been following along, you saw that my last day that we did in the gym was more like a rehab day because I'm dealing with some upper body injuries, which is kind of a bummer. I can't push the events as much as I would like to, but hoping one more good week of solid rehab and some rest and recovery on those will mean I'm ready to start in on some like harder training next week. But for in the meantime, um, we can really push lower body exercises. Watson deadlifts have been feeling and moving really, really well. So excited to see how they move today. Um, not really up to like, max squat type weights, but we're gonna be back back up until like the mid 300s today for some sets of five. So excited about that. I love squat day. So. athlete oh shit and are those brand new tear shoes they're pretty new i love them and they're pink so that's even better because they're like hot rod flames you go faster with yeah. them yeah i'm so much faster and stronger it's something about me if there's an opportunity to color coordinate i'm gonna take it i like black and pink things and is that the jersey you got from the Arnold? This? Oh, no, this is um, the Silverback end zone jersey. And it's um, what I squat in every single week. So anyone that follows my Instagram knows that this shirt means it's squat day. <laughs> Hashtag squat shirt. It's the long shirt and no pants. That's the squat uniform. And if you're watching and you hear someone else in the background chatting, that's Noah. He's on the camera for me today. Hello. He's helping me out with some vlogging. Uh, he also trains here at Dungeon as a fellow member of Team Laws and uh, as a wizard behind the camera. So appreciate his help. <laughs> Washing it down with the second best rain flavor. Because I didn't have the first place today. But. <laughs> and chasing that with some Reach Super, Super Pre. Pre. Getting my pre-workout and my vegetables in. And what's got you on Reach right now? What's that? What's got you on Reach right now? What's got me on it? Yeah. What I like about it? Yes. Um, I like that it has all the things I need to take in one because I am embarrassed to admit I'm really bad about taking supplements. And if I have a bunch of shit in my cabinet to take, I won't do it. So this has got my pre workout, my creatine, electrolytes, my greens. It's like five supplements in one. Um, and I'm lazy. So I like to get it all in together.
So walk us through a typical squat warm-up progression for you. So I, right now I don't have like a set warm-up routine. I kind of based on how I'm feeling for the day. Um, I've been starting most of my workouts with my shoulder mobility routine, which I posted on my channel um, in the past. That's all up there. Uh, today I went through some lizard lunges, um, some running man, some broad jumps, and some dead bugs. Just kind of warm up my hips, get those moving. Running Man is my favorite way to warm up like any lower body exercise. That's the one I was doing at the beginning, where it's like knee up and then reach back. It's a really good like unilateral glute warm up for me. Um, dead bugs are just kind of a staple in all my warm ups to get my core uh, firing. Um, but I kind of just base it how I'm feeling on the day. My hips were actually feeling pretty good when I got in here, so I did a, a more truncated warm up that I would normally do if I came in and I was feeling like a little bit tight and cranky through my hips. Um, I actually felt pretty good as I just started warming up and moving today. Um, so we kind of went through it quicker, but I kind of play it by ear. Um, I wouldn't necessarily advise that everyone does that, but I've been training for a really long time and I can kind of tell when I come in like what my body needs to get moving in a way to, to perform optimally. So it's kind of, depends on the day. One, the target muscle that you're trying to train is no longer fucked up or perturbed. Um, the supporting muscles, like you're looking for this exercise, for example, your lower back isn't fucked up. Your uh, lat position is you have your mid back is going all right, we got the knee sleeves, we got the belt, we got a mouth guard. Is that an airwave mouth guard? It's an airwave mouth guard. And it's pink. Just matching, like my matching the tears <laughs> to the mouth guard. Smelling salt and like praying to the gods, or um, this is just the second time you're doing this. Maybe you'll find you like just from learning it and then going back to it later, you'll probably make 20 So it's like every after the third week, every week after that, you'll send rep yards for the first month. How come you use some of the equipment that you use for squats? Like what, what I'm wearing? Yes. So I wear knee sleeves for basically everything um, because I'm in my 30s <laughs> and my knees hurt. Uh, actually, no. Um, I try not to use knee sleeves when I don't need to, but I do have, I don't know if you can see, I've got a pretty severe Ogden slaughters on my right knee um, and this knee always hurts because of it. Um, so I need the warmth and compression on this side. So I just wear them on both. Um, I don't wear super, super tight knee sleeves though, and I wear the thinnest ones that they make just because I like it just for some warmth and compression. I don't really necessarily want the like rebound out of the hole. Um, I just want a little bit of support. Um, the mouth guard I've been loving, I, I never used a mouth guard. I, I didn't like them. I was insistent that they didn't do much of anything um, until Airwave sent me a couple of them. And actually, these ones fit well and they're not distracting. And I actually took the time to learn how to use it and um, it helps me brace. It's kind of like learning how to use a belt. I was insistent that I didn't need a belt on deadlifts for the longest time until I actually got one that was the right size and fit properly and all those things and like took the time to learn how to use it. And lo and behold, it helps. So it's just like an, an, another thing to help me like develop tension and brace during my lifts. Um, and now I, I can't stand lifting without it. So um, yeah, I guess that's what I use for squats and a belt. But we all use a belt for pretty much everything. <laughs> Um, some people wear wrist wraps. Why would somebody do that? Um, I've seen that. I mean, really, like, it's just more stability. So if you think, like, if your wrists are wiggling, like, that's a point where you can lose, like, force transfer. Like, that's a, a point of contact between your body and the bar that if there's any wobbling, like, th there is force transfer that's lost there. So if you can create stability in your wrists as well. Um, it can it can aid the lift. Some people have wrist pain when they squat too, and it can help with that. Um, I've never felt like that was much of an issue for me, um, especially as I've worked on my shoulder mobility and I can bring my hands in a little bit closer. That feels really stable to me. I don't feel like I need extra support in the form of a wrist, a wrist strap, but a lot of people do like it and they like that extra support. 
is 22. My first working set is going to be 320 for five. We've got 315 on here, so I'm just going to do a single here to feel out the weight, and then we'll put on the extra five pounds and do the first working set. How'd that feel? Um, I never really trust how it feels on squats. Um, this is kind of the point where I'll start watching the videos to determine what weights I should pick. The program is written as a five by five at 320, and then it says if they're moving well to go up five pounds per set. So if we go up five pounds per set, we could end with 340 for five for the, the top set for the day. Um, for me, really anything over 315 just starts to feel hard. It just feels heavy. They don't move fast anymore, so I don't really trust my brain when it comes to like how they feel, which is why I film all my sets and I'll reference back and see like, how did it move? Like I'm more concerned with how it moved, with how the positions looked um, than how it feels, because if I go by how it feels, I'll never go up and wait. So uh, we'll take a look at how that warm-up set moved. We're still gonna go with 320 for five for the first working set. We'll watch the video and kind of base our jumps and whether we go up on, on that. That felt heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you did it though. And so that's gonna be it. a five by five? What's that? That's gonna be a five by five? Yep, so that's that one out of five. And uh, they actually moved just fine, so. <laughs> and that's why you film yourself and you don't trust how it feels because that felt shitty. They actually look pretty good. So we're gonna go up five pounds. Oh, now we got the jams. Jimmy Jams got some MCR, courtesy of got yours that, truly. That flashback music. Oh yeah. I feel like I'm in high school again. E this angsty emo for no discernible reason. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just life. Yeah. Uh, so up to 3.30, first two sets, uh, first two sets looks good. Um, they're feeling slow. I'm not unhappy with that though. I feel like I, I could do the squat faster, but I'm trying to be really intentional about my positions, using the right muscles, staying in my legs. So I get to a sticking point a couple inches out of the hole where my hips really want to shoot back. 
and kind of turn it into more of a posterior chain dominant squat and then really fight against that. So I'm feeling myself slowing down through that point, but I'm okay with that because I would rather go a little bit slower and be intentional about the positions through that sticking point than just try to do the rep faster um, and end up fatiguing and working the wrong muscles. So um, I'm pretty happy with how they're looking. They feel hard, but they look fine. So. Yeah. They're moving about the same as the first two sets, so I'm happy with that. The sticking point feels slow, but it has on every weight, so more weight. <laughs> we going up. <laughs> Obviously, they got, they got a little stuck. Positions felt better on that set than the last one, even though they slowed down. I'll watch it, I'll watch it, but, because I feel like I got stuck because I was stubborn about not letting my hips shift back, and so like I killed my momentum a little bit, but I think I'm happy with, um, the weight felt good, and I'm really um, proud of my ability to maintain positions and correct back into a good position yeah. times that I lost it. So happy with that. We're moving on to pause squats now, bringing the weight down considerably, bringing it down to 225. I think we have three sets of five pause squats here. The weight's not heavy, so being really intentional about maintaining tension at the bottom of the lift, making it a really crisp pause, and then initiating the movement from my legs, being intentional about like muscle contraction to start the movement, not bouncing into it or using momentum or anything like that. So. Um, we got three sets here. Um, feeling good? Let's go. Sweet. These feel so nice after the heavy ones. <laughs> that sounds about right. That's why I feel after all my laws programs.
You did it. Did it. That's so. it for squats. We got accessories now. Um, we're starting with some leg extensions and curls, so we're gonna go die doing that. I will never stop talking about this. Accessories should be just as hard as your main movements. Um, if you're not really, really pushing yourself on accessories, you're kind of wishing, I think, for most things. Um, so I think five sets of 10 on leg curls, and then some drop sets on leg extensions. Um, earlier on in the block, we went a little bit lower in the RP because we were easing into it, but we are in week four now. We're gonna push those quite a bit today. So we're gonna go do some RPE death, like extension to curls. <laughs> All right, let's get after it. <laughs> so for accessories today, we have leg curls, leg extensions. We have some uh, like crunches on the GHD and then behind the back barbell holds. Those are all listed separately, but because some of those are non-competing muscle groups, I'm gonna superset them. So I'm gonna do my leg curls paired with the crunches because those are non-competing muscle groups. Fatigue in my hamstrings is not going to limit me on crunches. And then I'll superset my leg extensions in behind the back barbell holds for the same reason. Those aren't muscle groups that are conflicting. So even if my quads are fatigued, that's not gonna affect my ability to grip a barbell. So starting here on the curls, uh, being really intentional as always and all the accessories, I'll talk about this forever on um, really focusing in on the muscle that's meant to be doing the movement. So we're not just trying to coast through the movement. We're not just trying to move weight. I'm trying to be really intentional about starting the curl from the hamstring, really intentional contraction, controlling it down, and then controlling it back up. Um, it's really easy just to kind of coast through accessories and move weight. We're not really concerned. No one's ever gonna test you on how heavy you can do a hamstring curl, but we want it to be really focused on the actual muscle that we're working on. So um, not going super, super heavy, but we got sets of 10. Um, going a little bit heavier than last week. We've been recording the weight each week. Goal is to go a little bit heavier with good movement quality. So um, if we need to drop weight throughout the set to achieve good movement quality, that's totally fine too. And then same thing here, with a, any sort of like sit up crunch, it can be really easy to go into using your hip flexors um, to do the movement. So for these, I'm not going to do a full sit up just because um, we're not really wanting to work the hip flexors at all. I'm just gonna do a crunch only coming up as high as I can by contracting my abs and then back down. So the range of motion is going to be smaller, but I don't want to involve my legs at all. So uh, let's do in sets of 15 here. I've been doing these without weight. If they're feeling good today, I might add a little bit of weight, but these have been feeling like an appropriate difficulty um, just by being mindful about the contraction without necessarily having to add more load. Yep, no weight is fine. <laughs> the worst part. Oh, work, okay. okay. Um, we've got written 
five sets of the curls and three sets of the crunches. So I'll do those back and forth for my first three sets and then the last two will just be just finishing up the curls. I feel this slow get up in my bones. <laughs> the giraffe legs. Okay. This is great to do right afterwards too because it feels like I'm foam rolling my pumped hamstrings. <laughs> I've never I thought about that. I love that for me. I see people using way too much weight sometimes on accessory movements. You can make a movement very challenging just by being really mindful and intentional about getting a good muscle contraction in the muscle that you want to be working. Sometimes I think just using more weight requires your body to compensate and use muscle groups that aren't maybe what your focus is. So uh, in general, depending on the purpose of the accessory. But if you're really trying to target and isolate a certain muscle, sometimes going less weight is actually better. Going slower through the movement, um, feeling a good stretch, feeling a good contraction, stuff like that. You can make the movement harder through effort before making it harder through increasing weight. So um, these, even though I haven't added weight each week, I've done body weight every single week, I have been able to make them harder just by being more intentional and putting more effort into the movement. That was actually really hard and I think it's because I'm getting a better active ab contraction than I was in week one, which is good. Um, you might, I might like intuitively think that means I'm getting worse at the movement because it's getting harder. Um, I actually think it means that I'm getting better at targeting the correct muscles. So it doesn't have to be heavier to be harder and I think that's an important note. Okay. Oh, okay. So, last pair of exercises for the day. We're doing a, a leg extension and then the behind the back barbell holds. Um, we're gonna play the barbell holds by ear. I did injure something in my forearm a little bit last week and my grip has been kind of limited in certain positions and certain angles. I just did a warm up set with like 50% of working weight and it felt okay. So it might be totally fine. Um, but that's supposed to be 235 for 30 second holds. We're gonna see what my arm is capable of today. If there's any pain, I might just shut that down. Um, and I'm just gonna be, take it with a grain of salt and kind of take whatever I'm capable of doing today. But like extensions, we're gonna work pretty hard on. We have four sets. Um, we're going 20 reps, 15 reps, 12, and then we're doing a drop set of 10, 10, 10 at the very end. Uh, the last couple weeks, it's kind of made sense to stick with the same weight through all the sets because as fatigue sets in, even with the lower reps, the increase in fatigue has kind of balanced out to a similar RPE. Um, today, I might try to push the weight higher as the sets go on so that it's really hard by the end. But um, I think I mentioned this in my last video that I did on this day, but I think worth mentioning again, my favorite cue on leg extensions is thinking about pulling my femurs back into my hip socket. So sometimes on, on this exercise, you'll see me with my hands kind of on my legs and pulling back to give myself some external feedback and some proprioception to like remind myself to pull my femurs back into my hip sockets, especially at the top with that, um, like that terminal extension um, that, that really puts it in my quads and makes them work really hard. So if you haven't tried that cue out, try it out, let me know what you think. That might have been heavy.
Shooting for 30 seconds. Let's do it. You got it. A little spicy. I actually felt okay. That's good. Uh, it actually felt more solid than last week. So I'm happy with that. And that's a huge relief that um, my grip still works fine. It's just like certain angles that it doesn't. Hmm. Um, but that makes me feel really optimistic that like the strength is still there. It's just, um, it's just a little finicky right now. And that's okay. But huge improvement. I like that. I like it a lot. <sighs> Ten seconds left. Three, two, one. That one I'm proud of, because that immediately fell into my fingers as soon as I picked it up. Oh. <laughs> but we, we held on, so. Hell yeah. What's the- Strong fingertips. Yes. What's the heaviest behind the back hold you've ever done? This. This. <laughs> PR, PR Actually, Uncle no, that's Laws. Not true. I've done 275 for three seconds, or um, not three. I've done 275 for 10 seconds. Um, but for 30 second holes, this is the heaviest I've done for 30 seconds. So that's cool. My little mittens are getting somewhere. Mitten gains. <laughs> I don't think I can say that grip is a weakness anymore. It's definitely not a strength, but we've worked hard. Um, and it's, I think it's very average now. For, for my, I shouldn't say average, it's for, for the upper level of my class, I'm, I'm confident in being able to hang, but uh, I'm still, we're still working on it because I want to be up there. I want it to be a strength. We don't, we don't do weaknesses, we do strengths. So. <laughs> All right, so we're on our last set of leg extensions. We got a drop set here, 10 reps, drop for weight, 10, drop 10 for a total of 30. Um, another uh, tip on leg extensions, which might be more applicable to like bodybuilders or people that are trying to do leg extensions like for specifically for hypertrophy. Um, you can kind of affect what part of the quad is targeted with your toe angle. So I've been going just straight It kind of get like good like general quad pump with that. If I turn my toe in, I get a little bit more of a lateral quad pump as opposed to if I turn my toes out, I get a little bit more of a medial quad pump. So if you're looking to target you can't really specifically isolate just one section of the quad, but you can kind of bias lateral or medial depending on your toe angle. So that's kind of a fun thing to play around with if you're just trying to build size in your legs. Fuck me. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. Ah. 
Going for those partial reps. You did it. Done. It was like th this close to being a life alert leg night where you can sit down and you can't <laughs> get back up. Oh, I won't get back up if I sit down, so. All right. That's a wrap on today's program. Um, I'm probably gonna end with a little bit of cardio just because I do need to drop some weight to fit, uh, to make weight for my next show. Um, not a whole lot, just a couple pounds, but been trying to end my sessions with some light cardio so that I can um, keep the fuel as high as possible. So I think I'm just gonna get on the treadmill, do some like incline walk, maybe some like walk, jog back and forth for like 20, 30 minutes to round it out. But that's a wrap on uh, my last squat session of this block. So as always, you could like, comment, share, all that stuff helps the channel grow so much. Let me know in the comments anything else you wanna see, any questions you have, and I will see you next time.